Hello everybody. Today we are going to be talking about saturation mutagenesis, and more specifically, how to calculate how many colonies you will need to screen to test each of the mutants that you create using your saturation mutagenesis technique. Let's start with a brief overview of saturation mutagenesis. This is a technique in which a single codon, or a set of codons, is randomized to create mutants of a protein. This is a protein engineering technique used to create variants to assay for mutants that are better than the wild type in terms of a specific property of interest. So if we have our protein here, we might identify a specific amino acid or multiple amino acids that we want to mutate. For example, if we want to increase an enzyme specificity for a particular substrate, we might identify a few residues in the active site that we believe might be important in determining specificity. Saturation mutagenesis allows us to randomize the amino acids at these locations in the protein. The size of our library describes how many unique variants we could create. To calculate the size of our library, we first need to understand how these mutations are made. We can randomize a particular amino acid using PCR. First, we need to create primers. These primers will have a random nucleotide sequence in the middle but will match the target region of the protein on both of its sides. PCR amplification can be used to recreate the original full length sequence, but with new amino acids at the location of our targeted amino acid. Now, you might be wondering how we get a randomized nucleotide sequence in the middle of our primers. We can do this using different types of mutagenic codons. By using an NNN random codon, we can create all 64 codons that code for all 20 common amino acids. An NNN codon means that for all three amino acids in the codon, we can have any of the bases, A, C, G, or T. Our library size is therefore 64. However, this gives us a higher probability of getting some amino acids over others, so we might want to use a limited codon set. For example, if we use NNK, we can get A, C, G, or T for the first two positions, but only G or T for the third position. This allows us to have less redundancy of the amino acids and reduces the number of stop codons that we can code for. Now, our library size is limited to 32 sequences instead of 64. There are other limited sets of random codons that can be used as well, depending on what types of amino acids you want to have the possibility of coding for. Once you have made your mutants, you'll want to calculate how many colonies you must screen to test each different mutant. To do this, we're going to use the following equation. PI equals 1 minus the quantity of 1 minus FI to the exponent of T. In this equation, PI is the probability that the sequence I is among the colonies tested. FI is the frequency at which sequence I is present in the library, and T is the number of colonies that need to be tested. We can rearrange this equation into a more useful form in the following manner. T times FI equals negative LN of 1 minus PI, using the approximation LN of 1 minus FI is approximately negative FI, which is true when FI is much less than 1. We can further rearrange by dividing by FI. 1 over FI is the library size, and therefore the number of unique DNA sequences that we have. Let's go through a brief example. If we are making one amino acid substitution using an NNK codon, and we want to ensure with a 99% probability that we have screened every mutant, we can calculate the number of colonies we need to screen like this. Because we are using an NNK codon, our library size is 32, like we said before, so that is equal to 1 over FI. PI is 0.99, as this is our probability of screening every mutant. So if we plug this into the equation that we had before, we get 32 times the negative LN of 1 minus 0.99. So this gives us 32 times 4.6, and so when we multiply that together, we get 147 colonies that we need to screen to ensure with a 99% probability that we have screened every mutant. All right, that's all the time we have for today. So thank you for watching.